that we here highly resolve these dead shall not have died in vain, that the nation shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. This nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. This nation under God <laughs> shall have a new birth of freedom. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. That the nation shall have a new birth of freedom. That tells you that this war on Christmas is really the tip of the spear when it comes to a greater battle that's brewing. And that battle that's brewing is those who would want to take God out of our society, out of our culture, which will lead to ruin, as mm. history has proven, in any country, any any um, government society that has kicked God out of the public square completely, mm -hmm. uh, it leads to ruin. Why would we go down that path when we know what would happen? So why did this happen? Our senior correspondent John Miller is with us. He's the former head of counterterrorism for the LAPD. John, what have you learned about the suspect? He is Paul Anthony Ciancia. He walks into the terminal. He's got the gun in a garment bag. He takes the rifle out. He opens fire, um, shoots his way through the checkpoint, um, going down a, a side, coming around the back end. He's focused on the TSA agents. Inside the bag, we are told investigators came up with notes saying um, uh, that the TSA were fascists and pigs, um, anti-American rantings, anti-TSA rantings, and references to the New World Order, which is kind of a growing conspiracy group that believes the world is going to be taken over by forces in black helicopters and so on. First up, it's all eyes on the sky. Live pictures now from Phoenix. For the second night in a row, military training exercises are underway around the valley. And within the last half hour, the Phoenix Police Department has confirmed to 3TV that they are supporting Department of Defense training around the city. There have been a lot of helicopters seen all across the valley tonight. Our own Bruce Hafner has reported seeing military helicopters flying low over the Scottsdale area. Dan Bongino running for Congress in, uh, in Maryland. And not because you want to, but because of the things that you've seen and the things that you know. Um, yeah. tell, me, tell me what you think is happening with the... The government is being used as a weapon to destroy people right now. Yeah, we're at a very dangerous point, Glenn, and thank you for having me. It's always an honor. It's been yeah, a while, Glenn, so it's, gr you. it's great to see you, and congrats on everything with the blaze. It's just taken off. Please, thank you. Um, yeah, we're in a lot of trouble. Uh, the president sees government, I think it's because of his lack of experience and maybe community organizing in the past is like this shiny new toy, which for all the disagreements I had with Clinton, Carter, and Bush, there were always limits. There was that line you just didn't cross. We cross it seemingly every day, Every Glenn. day. We're lost in the scandals. The Jamie Dimon shakedown at Chase, the HHS scandal, Kathleen Sebelius shaking down the healthcare industry for money, the IRS. It's to the point, Glenn, where these scandals in and of themselves would be huge, backbreaking scandals, are just lost in the scandal fog in, in this administration. It's worse than people know. I'm not, I'm not so trying me, to scare you. Tell me, tell me about the um, uh, NSA. But with knowing you are Secret Service. Yeah. Um, so knowing what you know, tell me what we should be concerned about. You give the government information. It will be abused. It is not a matter of uh, if it'll be abused. Keep in mind, it's only a matter of when. But the bottom line is having worked inside the government, it will be abused. It is only a matter of time. So what should we be doing? Because we ring the bell, we talk about it, we look at it, but it's not going 
it just not doesn't seem like it's going anywhere, Dan. No, it's not. And the reason is, as I said, that the, the, with the Obama administration, that they're experts in losing you in the fog of scandal. This NSA thing is a back-breaking story. It really is. It it it, it gets at the very roots. The <laughs> I'm looking at your roots there in the grass. The roots of what what liberty means. That flag means something. It's undermining the very principles by which made this country great. I know you're a believer. I'm a Christian. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, as far as I know, was the only person perfect human being ever uh, plant his feet on this earth. We are all doing something wrong. Remember, when the key's held by someone else, liberty means absolutely nothing. That personal and private self are being uh, evaporated. 200 military leaders out of their posts since President Obama took office. Why are we seeing this purge of some of our greatest leaders and what effect will this have on our national security? A lot of these guys disagree uh, professionally with the White House and as a result, you know, they're getting fired. Georgia restaurant owner who proudly makes it his mission to honor those who have served our country now facing a fight over a U.S. flag that he flies at his establishment. Darren Miller says he was cited by the city for showing his appreciation to the troops. The city now where it was a violation of in the right of way now is they're back a little bit saying now it's a permit issue and I just don't think I should have to pay money to fly the American flag or support our, our men and women in uniform yeah. and, and I, I, ref I refuse to. Absolutely right. Dean, what do you think this says about our country that you weren't able to fly your flags? Well, I think, you know, it's a shame. Should high school students say the Pledge of Allegiance before class? Well, according to the school district, no. Last night, they voted down a proposal that would require the teenagers to recite the pledge every day. The reason? Board members decided there's not enough time during the day to say it. We felt that we wanted to make it clear that at the high school level, um, we do not, um, there's not always an opportunity to have um, the Pledge of Allegiance spoken every day. This is why people don't understand what we're fighting for. When we talk about current events and we talk about these issues and what we're looking to preserve, they can't tell you because they can't even recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Proud of his 20-year military service and his 10 years of work at Dameron Hospital, Boots Hawks says he's not afraid of expressing his beliefs. I believe in America and I believe in God so strongly and I believe that America needs the blessing. The phrase, God bless America, has been in Hawk's work email signature for more than a year. But just days before Veterans Day, Hawk says the hospital asked him to remove it. He says he did remove it before he sent another email. Yet the next day, he was called into the office. I was going to be put on administrative leave immediately. And this was last Friday, right before the Veterans Day weekend. In the end, Hawks just wants to be able to put God Bless America back on his email signature. Meanwhile, an American soldier fighting for faith after an army briefing slaps a hate group label on a well-established traditional Christian ministry. That's right. The presentation linked the American Family Association to hate groups such as the Ku Klux Klan, neo-Nazis, Black Panthers, and the Nation of Islam. The soldier was so enraged, the fearful punishment for his own Christian values, he reached out to our own uh, Todd Starnes. Yeah, this happened out at Camp Shelby in Mississippi, and the soldier was uh, part of uh, 50 uh, active duty and reservist troops that uh, had to attend this mandatory session. And in this session, they certainly did label the American Family Association, which is a well-respected Christian ministry, as, a, as, a, as an example of a hate group. And this soldier snapped a photograph that he sent me showing the, the slideshow presentation. And also another uh, briefing, and I believe this was uh, in the Air Force, Force, labeled evangelical Christianity and Catholicism as examples of religious extremism. So uh, there's something going on here. The Pentagon, we tried to talk to them. They told us we needed to talk to the Army. And at that point, the Army, uh, well, it's been almost 24 hours and we still haven't heard back from them. Mm -hmm. um, a U.S. soldier um, in our Army spoke out. He said, this, I had to show Americans what our soldiers are now being taught. I couldn't just let this one pass. I was completely taken back by this blatant attack, not only on, on the AFA, but Christians in our beliefs. Your thoughts on that? Elizabeth, uh, for the past five years under the Obama administration, we have seen a significant increase in anti-Christian rhetoric and activity in the, in the military. It all started with a traffic stop for speeding, but it quickly escalated into a very dangerous situation. In the end, a 14-year-old was charged with attacking a state trooper. His mother is facing felonies, and now there are questions about why one officer fired at a mini minivan full of children. You're doing 71 back there on a 55 occasion. Oriana Farrell and a state police officer are arguing over 
a ticket just south of Taos. I'll be right back. Go ahead and turn the vehicle off for me. But as the cop walks off, Farrell does the opposite, pulling away instead. So he pulls her over again. The officer isn't too happy. Get out of the vehicle. Get out of the vehicle right now. You can see the officer try to pull Farrell out while the five kids inside scream. Finally, Farrell agrees to get out and talk, but the conversation doesn't last long. Turn around and face your vehicle. Man, to me. Farrell and the cops struggle as she tries to get back into the van. While that happens, the 14-year-old gets out again. And this time, he rushes the officer, trying to defend his mom. After a short tussle, the boy runs back into the minivan. The officer tries to get him out while backup arrives. Open the door! Open the door! Farrell starts to drive off while another officer fires at the minivan full of kids as young as six. What would you think if police pulled you over and asked for a DNA test? One woman says it happened to her and she called NBC5 to investigate the suspicious stop. NBC5's Scott Gordon has been looking into the roadblock in Fort Worth. Kim Cope was on her lunch break Friday driving north on beach when she came across two police cars with lights flashing. Yeah, they were about right in here. She says the uniformed officers directed her into this parking lot. I gestured to the guy in front that I just wanted to go straight, but he wouldn't let me and forced me into a parking spot. Once parked, she says she couldn't believe what she was asked next. They were asking for cheek swabs. Um, they would pay you $10 cash for that. Um, they would also, if you let them take your blood, they would pay you $50 for that. Or at the very least, she says, they wanted to test her breath for alcohol for free. It just doesn't seem right that you would be forced off of the road when you're not doing anything wrong. Federal agency confirms they're doing this in 30 cities across the country. You can't just be pulled over randomly or for no reason. But civil rights attorney Frank Colosi questions whether such stops are constitutional. I don't know, it just doesn't seem right. It, it just doesn't seem right that they should be able to do any of it. I mean, if it's voluntary, it's voluntary. And again, it just, none of it felt voluntary at all. We should make it clear the people actually doing the survey were government contractors. The Federal Traffic Safety Administration did not respond to our specific questions. After people get off a plane, the new airport exits are getting some strange looks. Something they look like a science fiction intergalactic time machine. I was expecting to get transported somewhere like on Star Trek. I thought, yeah, we finally got there. Others were wondering if it was an x-ray chamber or might fill up with dollar bills like on a game show. Yeah, it was odd. I'm like, where'd they come up with this? I'm not sure what it is. Doors will open and close automatically. The voice giving instructions is futuristic. But the new exit portals are just part of the Syracuse airport's $60 million renovation. To keep the passenger area secure, passengers leaving enter the portal, wait for one door to close, and then the other one opens. The portal is one way. If anyone tries to get back into the secure area, the door automatically locks. Syracuse may be the first airport in New York State to have the new exit portals, but the airport commissioner says they will likely be showing up at airports around the country very soon. Employees at this KFC in West Lafayette, Indiana, no longer need a password to sign into their cash registers. They come in and they uh, put their finger on a fingerprint mechanism and they just it just automatically clocks them in. Biometrics, once considered a far-fetched technology, is becoming an everyday reality. From signing onto your phone, accessing your bank account, to entering a secured room, your unique features are the key to unlocking anything worth safeguarding.